Hi everyone, this is Team 1068. I am Evelyn Davis, and today we're here with Michael Orr, Caleb Slade, and Brevin Bell from Utah Tech University in St. George, Utah. Our coach is Dr. Vinod Chalamuthu, and today we'll be doing Problem C, Dog Cannot Catch. Let's dive in. Playing catch with any of your furry friends is any pet owner's favorite pastime, though it may not be too fun if your pet is anything like Fritz here. In the given video, we had analyzed Fritz's ability to catch versus the owner's throws. We were asked to determine if the owner is making bad throws to make Fritz look bad, or if Fritz is really just a bad catcher. Though the distance between the two may seem too short for a good throw or catch, we actually have decided that Fritz is just too clumsy for this task. Here we're going to explain why. To set up our scenario, the following parameters and assumptions have been determined. For parameters, we decided that the objects thrown are going to be a burrito representing a rectangle, a pizza slice representing a triangle, an apple representing a sphere, and a steak representing a square. The second one is that the same dog and human are going to be observed for every trial to make it fair. Third one, the throwing technique is going to be the same every trial, just to avoid bias. And then the last one is that we're only going to be performing the analysis in a two-dimensional plane. Then for our assumptions, we're going to assume that air is not negligible in this case, no matter if we're outside or inside. The objects thrown are going to fall an ideal straight path every single time. The environment conditions are about roughly the same for each throw. Each object's drag coefficient will remain constant over the flight time. And the dog in question can jump to a maximum of 1.5 meters. Hi, I'm Brevin. There were five questions that we wanted to analyze, which is, does the height matter? How much time does the dog have? How much does the shape of the food matter? How much air friction matters? And what makes the dog better at catching? To model the ball being thrown, we use the kinematic equations. As we can see here, the position is affected by the velocity and acceleration. We also kept track of the rotation, which is pretty much the same, but it just acts on angular velocity and acceleration. We also didn't have any angular acceleration, so the acceleration would be zero. To simulate these equations, we used Euler's method to approximate them. As we can see in our equations, we have a gravity component in our acceleration, as well as a drag component in our acceleration. Then we use this acceleration to calculate the change in velocity and position. Hi, I'm Michael. We've incorporated a graph that allows us to visualize the trajectory of an object when released from various starting heights while keeping the same throwing speed and technique. This tool is designed to help us understand how a dog perceives and catches objects, taking into account different initial release points. By adjusting the slider, you can observe how the object's flight path changes. This helps us see that the object is easier to catch from a higher release point than a lower release point as the object travels farther. This is because Fritz is able to jump to the object when released from a higher point. Conversely, if we have a lower release point, the object's thrown distance will not meet the 5 meters required to reach Fritz. Similarly to the previous slide, this graph allows us to visualize the same change in height to the time Fritz has to catch the item. By altering the starting height, we can see the time it takes for the object to reach Fritz changes. This helps us explore the time constraints a dog faces when attempting to catch objects thrown from different heights. When the object is released from the initial height of 1.8 meters, it will take approximately 1.3 seconds to reach Fritz. The higher the object is released, the longer the travel time will be, allowing Fritz longer to perceive the motion and depth of the object being thrown. Whereas, if the object was released at, say, Fritz's height of 0.8 meters, the fall time would drop to 1.1 seconds, allowing him less time to react. I'm Caleb, and we'll be going over how to determine how difficult it is to catch each food object. To determine how difficult a rotating shape is to catch, 
we normalize the area of each shape to 1. We then made a difficulty score based on how difficult it is for French to catch each of these objects. This difficulty score is determined by the maximum horizontal distance between two of the object's vertices. As we see from the graph, some objects have higher catchability variance than others. For example, the rectangular object is both very easy and very hard to catch during its rotations, whereas the triangular object is always quite hard to catch. Since the sphere's horizontal length does not change through its rotation, its catchability does not vary. The figures to the right of the graph represent the average catchability of each object. So as we can see, according to our model, the shape of the object actually does determine how difficult it is to catch. Now we will determine if drag impacts Fritz's ability to catch these objects. First, we will have no drag coefficient. So we can see, as we change the mass of the object, the flight path will remain the same no matter what the object is. So now we can do our first example, the apple. Our apple has 140 grams and has a drag coefficient of 0.47. As we can see, the path didn't really change all that much. Now we'll go to the stake. The stake has about 200 grams and a drag coefficient of 1.15 in that ballpark. As we can see, the path didn't really change that much. Now we can do the pizza. The pizza weighs 80 grams and has a drag coefficient of 0.5. A little change, but once again, not that much. Now for our final item, we will see what the burrito is. The burrito weighs 280 grams and has a drag coefficient of 0.82. Once again, not that much of a change. So as we can see, drag doesn't really impact the flight's path all that much. So it's not much of a factor. For our last question, we were asked as a team what qualities we thought made a dog a better catcher. So to start, we thought that the main one is a dog has to have acute vision. Of course, an older dog is going to have a harder time processing motion and depth perception than a younger dog. The second one is going to be focus. A dog has to have a very good attention span for a moving target compared to throwing it and then going back to what it was doing. The third one is coordination and reflexes, and this one's the main one that Fritz lacks in the video. Fritz does not have any coordination or reflex to catch any item thrown at him, no matter the distance, the height, the time. Then the fourth one's going to be instinct. Dogs have to have some sort of hunt or prey instinct to go and be motivated to catch the item as well. The fifth one is going to be mouth size. It's definitely going to be easier for a bigger dog to catch a food item or any item than a smaller dog. And then the last one is going to be body language and cues. Learning and practicing with the owner is going to be very important for a pet. A newly adopted puppy is going to have a harder time catching and learning from the body language cues from the owner as maybe a three or four year old that has been with the owner for a while. Our model strengths are as follows. Having built generality into our model, we are able to change the model's parameters and variables to determine how each changes Fritz's likelihood of catching the object thrown. Our model also accounts for different shapes of the food items that would be thrown to Fritz. Because different shapes have different kinematics, this allows us to theoretically analyze which foods would be the most catchable. Our third strength of our model is that our interactive visualizations allow for greater flexibility when conceptualizing the problem. And finally, in using equations that have been factually verified, we add a robustness to our model that potentially would be different had we created equations that were less well understood. Our model could be improved by 1. Adding ways to make the throws have some variability in them. 2. We could also improve our model by experimentally determining drag coefficients for actual food items that could be thrown to Fritz. 3. Our model could be expanded into three dimensions. And finally, our assumption that if the food item fits in Fritz's mouth at a particular moment in its rotation, 
then Fritz is guaranteed to catch it could be revised. This revision could include a deeper look at the mechanics of the catch, allowing us to more accurately provide recommendations to improve the catch-throw interaction. At this point, we would like to sincerely thank you for your time. We appreciate this opportunity to learn and grow in mathematics. Helping Fritz become a better catcher has been a great experience. Thank you.